Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Kaczynski, and today we're going to talk about Bruxer solid zirconia, the next step in the evolution of full arch implant restorations. The patient was edentulous in the area of teeth 12 through 15, and the crowns of his remaining upper posterior teeth had worn down substantially due, due to long-term bruxing. Radiography com confirmed the poor prognosis for his natural maxillary teeth, as we can see in figure two. In addition to the pain and discomfort caused by the state of his teeth, figure three shows that the patient was self-conscious with regard to the poor smile aesthetics that his teeth caused him. With the entirety of his maxillary dentition deemed non-restorable, a full arch implant restoration was proposed that would provide stability, function, and prevention of the devastating bone loss that occurs in the absence of teeth. In vivo 5 software from Anatomage was used to develop a digital treatment plan that would place the implants in optimal position to support a fixed implant restoration. This diagnostic tool also served as an aid in determining the appropriate width and length of the implants and confirmed that the screws that would hold the proposed restoration in place would extend through the occlusal surface of the prosthesis. A surgical guide was fabricated to help create osteotomies that would position the implants in their pre-planned location. With the treatment plan finalized, the patient was called in for surgical placement of the implants. A sequence of drills was used to create the osteotomies through keys inserted in the sleeves of the surgical guide. Six Legacy 3 dental implants from Implant Direct were placed in the precise position called for by the treatment plan as illustrated in Figure 6. Figure 7 shows that the uh, implant sites are, are sutured closed uh, with the surgical placement complete. Healing abutments were seated and a conventional denture was fabricated for the patient to wear during the healing phase. As immediate seating of a fixed appliance was contraindicated due to inefficient primary stability. Remember, we extracted teeth and placed our implants. After four months of healing and implant integration, the patient returned so a preliminary impression could be taken. Figure 8 demonstrates the removal of the healing abutments which show healthy tissue surrounding the implant sites. Figure nine shows a clean impression that was made using a final vinyl polysiloxane material from Kettenbach. The lab fabricated a master cast and soft tissue model from the preliminary impression as is demonstrated in figure 10. Figure 11 shows a wax rim which was provided by the laboratory, and jaw relations were recorded using standard denture techniques. For the next appointment, a conventional wax setup was fabricated, including denture teeth to help the lab technician establish proper horizontal and vertical positioning. Figure 13 shows a wax setup that was mounted on an articulator along with the opposing model to verify the accuracy of the prosthetic design. To ensure that final milling would position access holes of the definitive prosthesis in the precise location needed to accommodate the location of the implants, the dental lab fabricated an implant verification jig. A custom impression tray was also produced by the lab and was designed to seat over the individual sections of the verification jig. The wax setup, implant verification jig, and custom tray were sent to the office for the next appointment. The patient was called in for the wax setup try-in and the final impression. After seating the wax setup in the patient's mouth and tightening the prosthetic screws through the temporary cylinders, the vertical dimensions of occlusion, centric jaw relations, aesthetics, bite, phonetics, and positioning of the prosthetic teeth were evaluated. Some minor adjustments were made and the prosthetic design was approved by the patient. After removing the wax setup, each section of the verification jig was transferred to the appropriate implant and tightened into place. After looting the individual sections together with acrylic resin, the final impression was taken with the custom tray, picking up the verification jigs. The definitive master cast would be fabricated from this extremely accurate final impression, with the implant verification jig ensuring a passive fit 
of the final prosthesis. Next, the dental lab scanned the fic final wax setup and definitive master cast, precisely capturing the doctor-approved setup and the exact positioning of the implants for CAD-CAM processing. CAD software was used to finalize the prosthetic design, ensuring a configuration that accommodates the positioning of the implants. The occlusion, jaw relationships, and teeth positioning were digitally verified as seen in figures 20A, 20B, and 20C. Next, the provisional implant prosthesis was milled, replicating the form of the approved setup. This temporary restoration is produced from polymethyl methacrylate, which is easily modified yet durable. In addition to providing the patient with a functional prosthesis while the final restoration is fabricated, the provisional adds one last layer of quality control, giving the patient and doctor an opportunity to verify the definitive design before the final prosthesis is milled from the Bruxer solid zirconia. Although alterations at this point are uncommon, any changes that are incorporated into the digital design prior to production of the final restoration may be needed. The provisional appliance was seated at the next appointment and the occlusion function aesthetics were verified. The screw access holes were covered so that the provisional could be left in place to serve as an interim prosthesis while the final restoration was fabricated by the lab. The final Bruxer full arch implant prosthesis was milled from the same CAD CAM design used to produce the provisional. Six titanium inserts were permanently bonded to the precise positions needed to connect to the implants with a passive fit. The final prosthesis was seated in the patient's mouth and the prosthetic screws were tightened to the appropriate torque per the implant manufacturer's instructions, or 25 newton centimeters. The access holes were then sealed with composite. The final restoration fit perfectly upon delivery and met the expectations of the patient and the doctor alike. You can see that the patient was extremely pleased with the aesthetics of the final restoration, which it should enjoy the same long-term prognosis as the osseo-integrated implants. So in conclusion, for many years, the best implant option for the fully edentulous has been the fixed acrylic hybrid denture. Although these appliances have, have served the patients well and have been nothing short of life-changing, they have also been subject to wear, chipping, breakage, and debonding of the denture teeth. Recent technological innovations have brought about the Bruxer full arch implant prosthesis, which pairs the optimal function of the traditional hybrid with the superior strength of monolithic zirconia. As patients respond to the newest and best implant dentistry has to offer, the ability to create restorations that are at once aesthetic and durable is both rewarding to the dental professional and sought after by the public. Thank you.